So we're gonna connect this hose right to the end of that. Blackstone oil analysis. Give it a nice whack. Snip it. In order for that to get in there with this arm, I cut it down in height. And finding this piece was a nightmare. <laughs> the one that was in your head? How about you stick to filming? How much did it cost? If you own a Sears SR20, 22, 22TN, or 22T, join us in our hangar as we perform an oil change. You can save yourself several hundred dollars every few months by doing it yourself. Welcome to our YouTube channel, Elevate. Okay, it's oil change time on a Sears SR22 Turbo. This is not an instructional video. I'm not an AMP, I'm not an IA. I am just a, a owner and pilot of this airplane. So under part 91, it is legal for me to do some maintenance on the airplane. And I've learned a few tips and tricks over the last few years. I bought some special tools for this. Okay, first step, make sure you have a container for the oil to be collected in. Make sure you have a hose. I'll have to post what size um, ID internal uh, interior diameter hose this is i forget what it is it looks like roughly three eighths but i'll post that on the video um, in the description um, make sure you get one of these and also measure it out and give you the dimensions that it should be um, in order to reach down into a container um, it's kind of nice to have a oil drip like carpet uh, not necessary but especially if you have a floor like this with swiss, swiss tracks you don't want to get anything underneath them, otherwise you got to pull them out and clean underneath them. So it's kind of nice to have that. Um, some paper towels, Phillips screwdriver number two, a long owl. I think I'm saying that right. Ol, ol, owl. Um, a really long, sharp, pointy thing that you can pound with a hammer. That's what this is. And then a hammer. Uh, that's the initial tools that you need just on day one. We just landed. We just got back from out west The engines piping hot Hangers nice and warm. It's the perfect opportunity to change the oil It reduces a heat cycle on the engine by doing it right after you land versus Firing up the airplane just to heat up the oil in order to get it to drain also when you um, When most mechanics pick up your airplane from your hangar and either tug it over or taxi it over, it's really hard to get oil up to 180 degrees and get all the, the uh, contaminants that are in the oil up floating nicely in the oil in order to get those contaminants out. So um, it's, in, it's just an opinion, right? But it's wise to reduce the heat cycle on the engine and to uh, drain the oil right when the engine's hot. Um, I don't believe in impact drivers on any of these screws, so I take the extra time to do it all by hand so that you don't strip out inadvertently any screws. And every time after I land, I take this oil cap and I open it up. Um, I forget who taught me that. Oh, Matt McDaniel, my CSIP, taught me that. Um, that allows all the steam to evaporate and come out of the... Uh, the oil filler um, versus condensating on the top of the engine. So I do that every time. That's why this is open. So I'm going to close that and we're going to take off this cowl, save those two screws. Take off the wedding ring to avoid scratching the paint, even though this airplane is getting painted. What I do when I'm putting this cowl off by myself is go like that, and that allows these quarter turns to just sit gently on the lower cowl. Same thing here. Now the whole thing is kind of up and propped off, so you don't have to worry as you lift this off. Just want to watch so you don't hit your prop and scratch back there. All right, so when changing the oil on a Gen 2 and up, you only have to remove this cowling. You don't have to remove that lower cowling. 
on a Gen 1, on the early Gen 1s, this lower cowling is a one piece. So I'm sorry, you gotta remove the whole lower cowling. That's a bummer. That takes a lot of time. So that that is a two person job. Um, this one is just a one person job. Super easy. Pull these out. Okay, turbocharged airplanes. I forgot a screwdriver, hold on. Number two slotted, I forgot that you need this. If you have a generation three and up, and especially if it's turbocharged, three and up. So um, generation three and up adds this air ram, and then turbocharged generation 3.5, or generation four, some people call this one, and up have this ram inlet, inlet here for the turbocharger. So if you look in here, they're not terrible to get at, but it's a little tight. Loosen this up. And gently pull that off for the glass cowling. Then this guy, if you look down in here. So I've tried leaving this one facing towards me. I've tried this guy and I'm experimenting between which one is easier. This is a new coupling. And it seems like with the new rubber couplings, it's a little easier to remove this one instead of the one forward of it. So get that loose. Okay. Now that can stay like that. I'm gonna go underneath and pull off all the screws that connect these two cowls. Okay, we're all loose. So this is the part where I'm gonna I'm gonna make a some sort of a custom protector that clips in right here. Once the airplane is painted, we're going with a very dark paint job. And you can see all these scratches here. This is this is not from me. This is from um, maintenance shops. And you can't blame them. They're in a hurry, right? They're trying to do it as quickly as possible. But the, the tip of their screwdriver just destroys these spinners. So this is gonna get painted. This is gonna get painted. The whole airplane's getting painted. It's gonna be like brand new. So I wanna create something that clicks in here and that prevents the, the lower cowling from scraping the spinner. For now, it doesn't matter because it's all, look at this. It's all destroyed from previous maintenance. So we'll do a future video on that tool once I make something custom. This can be reduced or prevented by taping off the spinner with some painter's tape. Also the upper portion of the uh, lower cowling can be taped off so that the upper cowling can't accidentally slip too low and damage the, the paint on the lower cowling. And lastly, the fuselage. Just aft of the upper cowling, you should tape off the fuselage. We don't do that on this airplane just because we've always planned on it being repainted. It's already been scratched up so much from previous maintenance that, uh, that there's no concern. But moving forward with the, after the new paint job, we'll be using a ton of precautions to prevent uh, any sort of scratching from removal and reassembly. So what I'm gonna do is now take this, this lower cowl, I'm gonna pull it this way and kind of out. Again, on a G2, this is super easy. It just literally comes right off. On a G3 and G3 up turbo, this is kind of tricky. Okay, so here's what I just did. I pushed that rubber coupling, silicone coupling. I pushed like that. It had created like a seal of suction and that's what was holding the whole thing. So now in theory, we're going to right away put this on here and snug that up so that we don't lose it. We'll take 
this guy. Set this right around here. I guess that's the other advantage to having this little oil rug is you can set things on it and you don't have to worry about getting on your nice floor. Take your hose, connect it to the quick drain. So right here, if you can sneak in here and see it, see right there, that's the quick drain. So we're gonna connect this hose right to the end of that. Don't push it in quite yet. Okay, just like that. And now we're gonna stick this in there. Now what we'd like to do is send in our oil for oil analysis. We like the company Blackstone. They do really nice reports of your oil, trends, metals. Okay, this is a Blackstone oil analysis sample. So all you do is you fill up this guy with about this much oil. And you want to do it midstream. So you start the flow, you push this in, and you turn it to the side. You can see it's going to stream out nice and quick because the engine's still hot. The oil is nice and hot. You let it flow for a little bit, and then we're going to collect our sample. Okay, right around there, so I'm going to kink this. Let this fill up. Now we're just gonna let that drain for the next day or two. This guy, you fill out paperwork that they give you. And then seal this up good. Okay, get the air out. Then you wrap it in this guy, just in case that leaks. screw that on and then we fill out the paperwork this engine has a brand new top end on it it's only got about a hundred hours on the top end so I've been doing oil changes every like five hours then 15 hours then 20 hours now like 30 hours around this that's about the maximum that I go on on oil changes about 30 35 hours so the last step of day one is to puncture one two three holes in the top of the oil filter so here's the oil filter on the back side of the engine. You wanna just set the awl and then give it a nice solid tap and puncture a hole in that oil filter. That way the oil filter drains out completely, allows the, the vacuum pressure to actually allow it to drain out. So you can see the oil filter there. It's that white, that white vertical canister. You can see this air conditioner a compressor here see that this is in the way to make it easy if your plane doesn't if your cirrus doesn't have air conditioning this whole process is so much easier because you don't have all this junk in the way so I'm going to reach back through here find a good spot give it a nice whack okay and then I'm going to find another spot right here give it a nice whack so now you just let this sucker drain out for as long as possible. Day two at the hangar. Today is the fun day. We get to do the oil filter and the oil installation today. So first step is this drained all night. Um, we were just here last night. That was the first part of the video. I don't know if you can see if you zoom in here on this quick, on this quick drain. See that blue thing? Oh, right here. Okay, there. Yeah, okay, ready? So you reach in there and you turn it. You push it in and you turn it counterclockwise and that then stops the quick drain. So it's the exact opposite to open the quick drain. And then you take that out of there and you just wipe off if there's any residual oil on the quick drain just so it doesn't drip on your airplane. Okay, and then this guy 
make sure this is nice and clean. Put our rubber band back on it. That way we can get our cap dirty. When you store these in your cabinet, if you don't want your cabinet to get all dirty, you can just keep it up like this in the corner. And that way over the next couple months, they'll just collect some on the bottom there. Okay, you can use either a Tempest um, 109 or a Champion. You can use the 108 on the models with the air conditioning. So on the, um, I, I believe on the naturally aspirated with the air conditioning and the turbocharged with the air conditioning. I'm pretty confident all of those uh the recommended filter is the 108 which is about this tall same exact filter just way less media inside because they figure well how else do you get in there to install it um but jim barker sears wizard taught me how to install this big boy in the air conditioned turbocharged um, io550 engines and you get much better filtration out of this, almost double. I think it's uh, like 30 or 50% more um, by using this filter versus the, the uh, 108s. So the tools that you need in order to do the large filter, or even if you use the small filter, um, this is a tool that I modified. I bought this from Aviation Resources, Jim Barker. Um, when I got this from them, it was all polished on the sides here and it was, it was bulkier. I had to file this down because mine's a little tighter than most. Um, there's, a, there's an arm on the air conditioner that comes down and it's really snug up to the top of the filter. So I bought uh, Jim's specialty tool I, or his specialty socket. I cut it down in height. So you can see that I took off maybe 3 16 or an eighth off the height of it which is fine, it's still plenty deep in order to get in there. And then I filed this whole thing down with a four inch grinder in order to easily get in there at any position. So I recommend doing that if you have a difficult time using the, st the standard socket from uh, Aviation Resources. You can see it on their website. Okay, so then you want a, um, a, a socket with a swivel head, that's crucial. On the non-air uh, conditioned models, this doesn't matter, and this doesn't matter because you don't have that tight space. You can get in there with a regular socket. Um, I forget the size of this. I'll have to post that on the video. Um, it's either 7 eighths or an inch. A extended wire cutter, and you'll see me use this in a second here. In order to get down there, again, if you don't have the air conditioning, you can just do a regular wire cutter. You don't need the extended one. The first thing we're going to do is take this guy and go up there on the ladder and clip. We're gonna reach in and we're going to clip the safety wire. And we've got the, the extended wire snips on that safety wire. Now we're just gonna snip it. Now we'll take our customized socket and reach in there. See it there? See how in order for that to get in there with this arm and not having to remove that arm, that's an option, but that's a waste of time. I had to cut that socket shorter in depth and then file the side so that at any point you can rotate this and at any tooth you can slide it in. So it took a little bit of figuring out, but if you modify it, it makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so then this guy, I like to, I like to bring this in from the top and then put it right there and now push it down into place. So we loosen up just enough where we can then pull this apart and do the rest by hand. Pull that off, pull off our swivel and our socket, our modified socket, right? So this has to be filed down enough where once that's loosened up, you can um, still get this out because obviously as it loosens, it tightens up that, that spot. So you modify this enough where you can, once it's loosened up, you can still pull this out. 
All right. And now just by hand, you unspin this. I should say you spin this off. Now with those holes that we punctured into the top of it yesterday, in theory, no oil is gonna dump out of the thing, right? Very little will come out as we take it and maneuver it through all this mess. So that's the, another advantage to waiting a day or so, is that you're not getting the back of your engine all full of oil, which no one wants that. I'm gonna hold that with this hand, okay? Bring this out like so. Nice and tight. Look at that. Almost dry. No dripping, nothing. So we're gonna save this, we're gonna cut this apart, and we're going to uh, look at the media and just make sure that there's no uh, larger chunks of any kind of uh, ferrous metal or, or aluminum in there. Next step is to clean off the top of the seat, the oil filter seat. I'm just going to reach in here with the paper towel and clean off that seat and just make sure that it's proper, nice and clean and smooth. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna go back in there. I'm gonna try it with these extensions, this, this extended uh, wire cutter, or this uh, standard one, and try to snip that wire. It's always a little tricky to get in here. All right, so we're cutting the wire tie here at the bottom. Okay. I'm, holding, I'm holding the wire tie with my left hand so we don't drop it. And then with my right hand, I'm clipping it. Okay. I only clipped one. Yep, that's all you need to clip is just the one. You don't want to clip both, because if you do, when you pull this out, you're going to have a little wire that falls, and you don't want that. Oh, so you just clip one. That way, as you pull it out, it stays together as one. One time, I accidentally clipped this second one, and finding this piece was a nightmare. It actually landed, well. One time it was in your head. Was that it? Was that the same one? Is that the one that was in your head? How about you stick to filming? <laughs> wasn't, it, wasn't it embedded in your head? Was that this project? <laughs> was that this Remember airport? you thought it was like an ingrown hair in your head and it was a piece of the engine yeah i think you actually might be right <laughs> so yeah i think it happened what didn't it happen twice i don't know and yeah, you made me look time, at it the, yeah the first time what happened was it landed in this um it's like a fairing for this front strut it landed inside this cup and to find that was a nightmare once i found it great but then i couldn't get to it right because it's you'd have to see it inside there it's it's super tight with the actual strut so there's no way to actually get it so i was able to work it all the way down to here and then turn the wheel and actually able to uh to get out of there so you don't want to have to go through that well then you didn't tell them how it ended up in your head i don't remember <laughs> but i do remember that this happened twice <laughs> over the years and uh and i couldn't believe i did it the second time and it's because i didn't own I did not own these. So I was reaching in there kind of blind, trying to do it um, with the small snips. And most of the time, or in, in most situations with this tight setup, you need this uh, extension snips. I found these on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Okay, so now that that's cut, now we wanna do the new safety wire. So I, I wish that there was like a scientific way of figuring out how long to make this, but what I do is I take the length of the filter and then I multiply that by roughly two, just over two. 
So right around there, and you can see there's a curl to it, so it should be plenty long enough. I'm sure a mechanic can pipe in, an AMP or IA could pipe in and tell me the true way to, to figure that out. I would actually love to, to know that. Now what we're gonna do is have just a little bend on this guy and try to be a magician and reach in there and find the hole to feed that through. So the, the Brainiacs at Continental and Cirrus decided to put it on the back side of the filter, which you can't get to from that side of the mm. airplane, right? So we need to do it from this side. I don't know why it's not just right here where we could easily get to it. It's hidden on the back side here. Okay. So we're gonna try to reach in there and feed it through. Okay, can you see that? Mm -hmm. We got it. It's fed through. Okay, we're gonna pull this so that the 50% point. So it's like half and half? Yep, half okay. and half. We put a kink in it. Okay, there we go. So can you see that? Yeah, yeah got that back there. Okay, so now we take our wire, let's call them wire tie pliers for now. We take our wire tie pliers. I like snip cutter. Well, that's not a snip still. Mm. It does have a side cutters built into it, but it's not. All right, so we take our wires like that. We hold them together. We take this, our wire tie pl pliers with spinner feature. And we clamp the two wires. Okay, we've got them clamped. So now we're gonna take this, we're gonna tension it. And let's do it, let's do it at this angle here. So we don't catch that threaded shaft for the filter. Okay, and we're going to pull this and see how it spins. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we're gonna let that go. Pull it again so it spins. Pull it again. So now to release it, we crimp down on this. So all we did, here's how this works. Press this together, push the lock in, right? And now it's tight, it's locked on the wires. Then when you're done with it, and you wanna let go of the wire, you just push that in and the lock automatically pops up because the lock is on a spring, spring mechanism. Okay. So now we take our new filter, you write your hobs on it, you write your tail number on it, and you leave the um, rubber dry. You do not, on, a, on these filters at least, or on, on most airplanes, I, I believe, the manufacturers, uh, both Tempest and Champion, say do not put oil on that. And I think, my, my guess is, it's a more accurate torque reading without oil for some reason. You would think oil would give you more accurate torque reading. Apparently not. We've got our date, our tack time, our tail number written on the filter. So we are going to install this. We want to be careful of this oil cooler here. Okay, it's... it's Where in, is it? Right here. Okay. It has fins on it, similar to this intercooler, similar to a radiator, right? Um, you want to be careful that you don't scrape hard against that with this filter, because it can bend the fins, which then reduces the, uh, the cooling. Make sure that the safety wires on the back side of the thing. Okay, so we're on the spindle. Okay. Righty tighty. Spinner on by hand. Okay, now we can 
torque it just a little bit by hand there. Now we can stick our modded out socket on it. Sneak in from the top. I'm blind. Swivel's installed, our socket adapter or extension is installed. So you take your torque wrench and you set it to 17 foot-pounds. That's for this filter on the IO550K engine. It might be different uh, for a 520 or a 540, but in the 550 with the Tempest and the Champion, it's 17 foot-pounds. So we set it up. 16 is 17. 15 plus 2 is 17. Let's try it again, right there. Okay, I feel pretty good about that. Set your torque wrench back down to zero for storage. Remove your swivel. Oh, a socket came right with it, cool. Store these together. Okay, now the funnest part. We have to untie the tie wire at the top to loop it around the top of the filter, just like this, right? So the tie wire on this, when it was installed, was ran running down here like this, okay? to the back of the oil filter platform. So we want to do, mimic the same thing, right? So we have to untie some of the wire, slip it through one of these eyelids, and then tie it back. So that's what we're gonna do next. So the wire is right here. Okay. Okay. Oh, and so the eyelid is the... Eyelid's right here. I'm okay. calling it eyelid. It's a, okay. it's a loop. Because you want right there, For you want to take apart the, the uh, twist in the wire to that point, and then feed it through and then retwist the wire. That way, if this filter tries to, for some reason, start loosening up during flight, this tie wire would prevent it from spinning counterclockwise okay so we're choosing this guy right here that's the perfect one and we're going to untie this wire you do it by hand that's the only way that i know of to do it um i'm sure there's a better way if an amp or ia could maybe give us some pointers that would be awesome how much does an oil change cost it depends on the shop. It can cost a thousand bucks. And this has taken us, well, we'll see at the end of the video, probably two hours of time total. And if a guy is paying a thousand bucks, okay, that's almost there. One more spin, because you want it to be taut. Right there. Okay, that's perfect. 
So now we want to take this tie wire and feed it through. Okay, so now we can take these two wires, we can clamp it with the pliers, and we can pull that taut. Let me see if I can do this with the camera there. Clamped. We're gonna pull this tight. Okay, right there. Nice and tight. This is the other wire that I lost once. Hold this with your hand. So we're gonna hold this wire while we cut this end. Okay, we're leaving two inches of wire twisted on the filter. Yeah, I like, I like how many twists are on there. See how nice that is? Mm -hmm. And now we're going to take it and put it right through this hole here. There, so that hopefully no mechanic gets cut on it. Cool. Yeah. Looks good. Okay, so the filter is done. That's the, that's the hard part. Now we fill it up with oil. Well, on our airplane, we like to run both or I should say either Airshell W100 all summer or when we're going to be in a nice warm environment, 60 degrees or greater. This is kind of our, our oil of choice. Anything less than 60 degrees or variable in the temperature, we run Philips XC 2050 multi viscosity versus a straight weight. Um, but whenever we're running either, especially the straight weight, we preheat the engine no matter what. So even if it's 60 degrees outside, if we've got this in it, we're preheating the engine for several hours before we fire it up. This is a little bit more forgiving, but in theory, it doesn't do at quite as good of a lubrication as the W100. Um, this guy, you don't necessarily have to preheat, but we still do, just in case. If it's like 70 degrees out, we won't. 70 degrees out we won't but if it's like 50 out we'll make sure that we preheat even with this so it's the middle of winter still we're going to install xc once our engine is completely broken in then we're going to start using cam guard again we use eight ounces of cam guard um, i'm a huge fan of mike bush savvy aviation um, we subscribe to his services and mike bush recommends cam guard even though we fly our airplane every two weeks or so. He still recommends this, and so we're a believer in it, but not during break-in. Because we're still, we don't even have 100 hours on the airplane right now, or on the engine. We have maybe about 75 or 80, something like that. So for the next uh, 20, 30, 40 hours, we're not gonna run cam guard, we're just gonna run regular oil. Even if you think you don't need a funnel, use one anyways, trust me. I thought I didn't need a funnel and I had, I had done maybe, I don't know, five of these oil changes and I, it was spotless until one oops and I got it all over cylinder, what would this be? This is two, four, six, no, six, four, two. So all between two and four, I got it all kinds of oil down there and it took forever to get it cleaned up. So use a funnel, it saves you and it saves a mess on your engine. And you can pour it a lot faster too. So we just make sure 20W50. I have had it happen where aircraft spruce accidentally sent me 20W60 mixed in with an order of 20W50. 
and I filled up the engine with, I think, two or three quarts inadvertently of 20W60. I did some research on it. At that time of year, it was okay uh, to have that mixture in there, but uh, it can happen. So I just, I look at every single one just in case. So we're gonna do that. I like to let it sit like this for about a minute or two in between. We're gonna go with eight quarts. If you have a naturally aspirated, the, the 550-N, when we had that engine, we only did seven quarts. That one likes to blow out oil. I don't know if it was, I don't think it was just ours. I mean, if you talk to Mike Bush about it, there that engine is notorious to blow out oil. If you've got anything more than about six, six and a half on the stick, it blows it out until it gets down to about six, six and a half, and then it'll stay. This one doesn't like to blow out as much oil for some reason as the naturally aspirated, especially since we got the new top end in. So we can do eight quarts and she stays at eight and she'll slowly blow it out until about seven, uh, seven and a half. But um, she, she does pretty good with the oil, uh, very little oil consumption and the, um, the air oil separator is, came from the factory on this model. A lot of the uh, Dash N engines did not have an air oil separator on them. All eight quarts are installed. This cowling, you put, this is the air inlet for the G3 and up. You just put this around it and snug this up. You wanna make sure that it's on there by at least about an inch, inch and a half, and then snug that up with a number two uh, slotted. This here, the silicone coupling, can look in there see that there's our silicone coupling let me loosen this up we're gonna slide that all the way on there like that okay and then put the band clamp right about 50 percent on onto the aluminum housing for the uh, turbo inlet and then we refasten this We'll move on to the upper cowling, put in our dipstick, and be done. Tighten up your band clamps. And because you're tightening this on fiberglass, Jim Barker warned me, you don't wanna, you don't wanna over tighten them. Just snug so you don't crush that fiberglass. This guy, this is an aluminum housing. So this one you can go a little bit, a little bit crazier on. But the one to the right of this, the other end of this coupling, you do not want to tighten that too bad. It will crush the fiberglass of the cowling. So it's this guy right here. You don't want to snug up that one too bad. So that's why now I moved, or that's one of the reasons why I moved to this being the side that I take off instead of this. That way there's less of a risk every time we're taking this one on and off. While the cowling is off, it's a great time to check for leaks. So I did a full leak check on the whole underside and, and uh, co-pilot side of the engine. And fortunately, we look good. Um, we we'll definitely take the opportunity to, uh, to do a leak check. If you've got a Swiss Trax floor, this is another advantage to having the oil pad is you can set your screws on it. You don't have to worry about them falling through the floor. That's the one downside to Swiss tracks. I'd say probably the only downside to Swiss tracks besides the cost. There's one longer screw. That guy is best to throw right here because there's more to go through. putting your upper cowling back on. I like to shake it like this so that the quarter turns are all sticking out. They help to keep the cowling up, propped up instead of falling down on that other side when doing this by yourself. And just watch out for the prop.
So on this side, pushing in the quarter key so that it sits too high. Like so. You're purposely propped up. Just come on over here. See how it caught on the, the engine baffling, the cooling baffling? Lift this up carefully. Pull those out. Push these back in, check the other side. Make sure that none of this happens, right? You don't want to pinch your baffling. So just go one step at a time. I like to take my hand and make sure that the baffling is up into place up against the upper cowl. Okay, now she starts to sit in place. Same thing over here, look at male-female flange here. Make sure that that's on the correct side. This side, same thing, hands up in there, making sure that that cowling, I'm sorry, that that baffling is not pinched. And then you kind of feel it just want to go into place. You don't want to force anything. You want it to sit naturally. And then you feel this, this air baffle to make sure that it's folded correctly and not kinked. It's an air-cooled engine, so it's super important for them to have proper air pressure on the top and bottom of the engine. And the only way to ensure that is with the baffling sitting properly. So let's get these screws installed first. Good. Ready? It's reading nine quarts because the engine hasn't ran yet for a quart to get sucked up into the oil filter. So it's going to read a little high until it's ran and some oil is sucked up into the filter. So that's an oil change on your airplane. Now we're going to um, do the paperwork required by either the mechanic or the pilot in order for it to be a... a a legal oil change that's documented in the logbook. Every second, third oil change, it's nice to cut open your oil filter and check out the condition of the interior of the oil filter, the, um, the paper filter. And you can see how big of um, metallic particles are in the filter. And that way you can understand what type of uh, wear is happening in the engine. So we're gonna demonstrate that. Um, ideally, you put it in a vise, crank her tight, and then this is the one that I have. It's an oil filter cutter, and it's made by Tempest. It's a pretty decent unit. I've been happy with it. Um, you put this shaft in the, um, in the female threads of the oil filter, and I don't know why, but counterclockwise tightens it, so... Turn this counterclockwise. Nice. Every turn of the cutter, I'm turning the knob, I don't know, 
tenth of a turn. It's pretty thin metal, so it cuts pretty easily. You just gotta be patient with it. It's like opening up a can. Okay, let's get some paper towel under there. Set this guy aside. So this is just trash. We can, we can throw this away. We can throw this away. How you cut the filter open has to be by a small blade that doesn't create any type of uh, metallic uh, debris. Because otherwise that'll get into your filter media and it'll, you'll confuse that with actual engine um, particulates that are coming out into the filter media. All right, so you start with your sharp utility blade. Ideally have gloves on. Hold this guy down. There's a piece of metal there, so start right behind it and start cutting your media. Okay, all the way around both sides, clean this up. If you have one, an insulation knife is nice because you're able to get deeper with it. Clean this up. to do is it's nice to cut come across this cut that there as a starter there we go okay let's try to keep this this train going here okay. there's gonna be metal in this filter just a matter of how much and how how big the metal is and what type of metal it is. Um, a lot of that can be detected with the oil analysis, but um, the larger particulates that do not float in the oil can only be detected in this. So in order to see those, we want to cut this filter first in half so it's not so large. Okay, so we're going to take it and we're gonna sever it right down the center, roughly. Okay, we got two parts now. We're gonna take and create a cradle here because we're gonna squeeze the engine oil out of it so we can get a really good look at it. And we're gonna try not to make a mess when we do it. So hopefully that can capture the excess oil that squeezes out of it. We'll take our first victim here, put it like this. See how she's flowing out of there? Crank that tight, let her flow out. Assist it, speed it up a little bit. Okay, and that's really as good as you need to get it. And now you're able to take it out and analyze it nicely. A nice accurate reading. trash. Now this is what we want to analyze. Here's our, here's our media. Here we go. Here's the side that matters. 
spread this out and we look to see how large the, the metal particulates are. These are all nice and small and very few. Do you see them in there? They look like sand, little tiny grits of sand. Now this one is larger. See that there? Those are larger. And I would be concerned if this wasn't a brand new 70 hour top end on this engine. This for 70 hour top end is actually not that many, not that many particulates at all. Um, this is what you see normally right here. And that's a nice clean, that's actually a very clean running engine. To see only that is very, very good to see. So let's do the same thing on the second one and just make sure that we've got nice consistent results like this. And if we do, then we know our engine should be in theory running very healthy. The whole top end on this engine only has 70 hours. And that's now when it, when this filter was started, it had 35 hours on the top end of the engine and 40 hours. So looks like I'm out of paper here. So this is actually, I think very, very good for after break in. I'll run this past our mechanics. Let them see the video and confirm. A lot of times I'll take and send them photos and they can analyze it remotely. Now we find the dirty side right there. Look at it. Okay, good, normal, good. So here, if the entire filter was like this, that would be cause for some conversation with a mechanic. But because that's rare, and that's only in a couple of spots, and because the engine is so new, that is actually very, very good results, I believe. We'll double check with our mechanic, Looks like we are we are pretty safe here to fly. Okay, so that's the entire process of changing the oil. All in all, we're in two hours, maybe two and a half hours, but saved about oil changes these days in a Cirrus seven with a with a oil filter inspection. 700 to a thousand bucks is what they charge and some pilots are taking the airplane flying it waiting all day or half a day and then flying it back so it takes sometimes way less time to do it yourself less money you get much more in tune with how your engine's performing how healthy it is and you're able to use a tall filter versus the shorty that's half the size that is half the filtration capability of the tall one because most mechanics well I don't know of any mechanics that are willing to use the tall filter except for aviation resources okay truly the last step filling out paperwork so here's our Blackstone Laboratories oil analysis um, we've got Continental TSI 0550 K1B serial number. So you want to put your model, your serial number, the type of aircraft, the model of aircraft. These are all steel cylinders. Here's our registration. Here's our date. 32.6 hours of total time, 39 hours of Hobbs. Hours on engine, 72.8 total time, 88.8 on Hobbs. And then we did add one quart in between our oil changes in that 39 hours. And it was Philips XC20W50 that we used in the airplane. Uh, we have a card on file. Do we use any additives? No, but after this oil change, we will be using cam guard. But for initial break-in, you don't want to use cam guard. Has the engine been inactive? No. Uh, replacement cylinders? Yes. 72.8 total time hours ago and 88.1 Hobbs since the new cylinders went on spin on filter and then thanking them so that just goes in here 
then they email you the results. And I actually print out all the results and I add them to the logbook. That way there's a record. So you can see the results here. This is what they look like. So here's all the different results. This is before I own the aircraft. So this is the latest one. And it shows our the averages. It shows what we're looking at as far as our, our numbers and then our previous oil changes. You can see a spike in all levels here that was right after the, um, well, this one was immediately after the top end was installed, but that was only three hours. I did an oil change after that initial three hours. Then I went 18 hours and we still at elevated levels. That's totally normal. And now it started to settle out this last one. So then we'll compare. What you want to see is the trend going the right direction with the uh, analysis. So that's what's so nice about Blackstone. They write us a nice paragraph about each one of how we're maintaining our engine and how things are looking. So you can feel very confident in, um, in flying the airplane. Um, then you want to write in here the, the actual uh, log. So because we're allowed as, as owner and pilot, we're allowed to do some of the maintenance. Write in here the date, the total time, the time hobs, uh, what we drained, the new oil filter, how many quarts of what type of oil, and then we checked for leaks. And that's it. Now it's all logged, everything is legal, and you can feel good about flying your airplane. If you like what you see, please like the video. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to our channel, Elevate. Mm -hmm.